Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Courtney and I'm on the social media team here at Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. Today we're at our Delafield Clinic and we're going to learn more about our physical therapy gym and get a little bit of a behind the scenes tour. Let's go take a look. Joining me today in our live broadcast, we have Dr. Shane Fair. Welcome to Delafield Clinic. Thank you. And physical therapist Aaron Meyer. Hello. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. Dr. Fair, we'll just start off. Can you just tell me a little bit about what your role is and what you do here at Children's and sure. specifically yeah. at the Delphi? Absolutely. Yeah, so I'm a pediatric sports medicine specialist. So really what that means is I take care of conditions in the athlete head to toe. Includes concussions, fractures, sprains, strains, overuse conditions like tendonitis, um, you know, and the growth plate conditions, which is really common in the young athlete. Great, thank you. And then as a physical therapist, can you just kind of tell me what you do here? Absolutely. I take patients as Dr. Fair sends them over, and we evaluate them to assess their movement and their strength and flexibility and work on getting them back to their unrestricted function. Great, thank you. So kind of as a team, you guys work together to create the best plan of action, course of action for any, anyone, any age, that kind mm -hmm. of any. Yeah, really the young athlete through age 18 essentially is who we see so you know my role is to really evaluate them and then establish a diagnosis and a treatment plan and then most of our athletes are going to be seeing um, Aaron or one of the other physical therapists to kind of return them back to full function now if they have a surgical condition then they may have to see one of our surgical partners but most times that's not the case great thank you and then they meet with you kind of depending on the plan or however often they come to you um, is that set up per patient Absolutely. So um, sometimes insurance um, kind of dictates how often we see patients, but usually once or twice a week for several weeks um, to again establish strengthening, improve flexibility, and work on their function. And then we return them to Dr. Fair so he can follow up and make sure they're good to go. Great. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess let's start off and just kind of take a look a little bit here at our facility. Um, obviously it's very big. Can you tell me about what you have in here? Absolutely. So one of our biggest assets is that we are set up um, with wide open space. So we need to see what these athletes are doing that has caused their injuries. So I want to see them run or I might want to see them throw or pitch or kick. Um, so we've got wide open space which is very unique um, to allowing us to do that. We need to understand their mechanics to understand why they're injured. Um, and that helps us set up our plan of care so that we, we know where we need to strengthen and get them back to their, to their level. Great, thank you. So now I see that you have What's this going on right here? This here is our pitching mound. So, um, to really establish proper pitching mechanics, we need to see these athletes actually pitching, and, and most high schoolers are pitching at a mound. So we've got this nice piece of equipment that lets them actually be up on a mound surface. Um, set up at 60 feet, uh, which is again a tribute to our nice wide open space to let them get down to the, to the net where we'll track the ball. <laughs> Great, very cool. And I guess as we walk a little bit further, I noticed before when I was looking around, you have like basketballs, you have hockey sticks, lacrosse sticks, treadmills, you know, we've got it all in here. Um, what can you tell me about that equipment and why it's all in here? Absolutely. So a lot of these athletes come in um, primarily with overuse or acute injuries. Um, again, we want to know where they're breaking down, what caused them to get injured. So we want to use their sport-specific equipment to identify what their movement strategies are. And often we'll find that that also helps when we're returning them to function. So the child that might be a little hesitant to bend or, or squat, um, we might put a hockey stick back in their hands and all of a sudden they're kind of right back into their sport mode and they do a much better job for us. So we like to really utilize their interests to get them back to function. Okay, and what kind of patients do you typically see? I guess both of you kind of work together. Mm -hmm. um, it can be anything from a concussion to a very serious foot injury. Or right. Well, I think that's one thing that's very unique about our program is I think we're really well positioned to see just about anything um, as it relates to you know injuries that occur not only in sports activities but also recess on the playground, you know PE class, and so you know I think we really understand the mindsets of the different age groups and maturity levels, and you know we see anything from you know people that are in the water like swimmers, you know to the ice, um, you know to the field, and so I think that you know really the equipment we have the really the space that we have is, is well positioned again to take care of just about any um, of athlete that's out there and so um, and I think that that's really unique um, kids are definitely not little adults and so we have to understand their injury that at this point in time is usually coming from a sport activity because okay. they are active it's the time of their life to be most active and nowadays kids are playing all year 
Yep. You know, they're really doing these things all year and they're at much higher risk for overuse conditions. Okay, very cool. Now, as we're looking over here, I noticed from here to here, the ceilings get higher. It's got a basketball hoop. You've got some medicine balls and some big uh, balance equipment. Can you tell me more a little bit about why this is necessary? Absolutely. So this double high ceiling really lets our volleyball players work on volleyball skills. Um, also lets us set up for basketball shooting. And again, we want to assess their mechanics. So for them to squat for us is a little different from how they might shoot or set up to shoot in a five game tournament. So we want to see where they're breaking down so that we can really correct those mechanics. And this nice high ceiling lets us do that. Very cool. Thank you. So now, as a team, you guys work together. How um, how does a patient generally come to you guys, or you know, does it take an injury in order to see a physical therapist or the sports medicine team, or how does that work? Yeah. So many times, I would say um, our athletes come in initially to me. Um, usually, that's through either an emergency department provider who sends them on to you know get definitive care, or through an athletic trainer on the sideline, or you know potentially a primary care physician okay. who sees that patient. So they come in, they see me many times because we're dealing with. Um, the bones, you know, the, yep. the muscles, we want to kind of get our best evaluation in the front end. And so that usually includes x-rays. Because if we can rule out a fracture, if we can rule out some kind of a growth plate condition from the beginning, that'll really help us to understand what's going on. Um, and so after they see me and we come up with that plan, um, they usually go off to see her and, and she's going to actually be the one who gets that person back to function. And so, okay. you know, my job really is that diagnosis and plan perspective. Great and Aaron carries that out. So if someone is born with an every, you know, condition, mm -hmm. um, eventually would they see the sports, someone in the sports medicine program or is it typically an injury and then you come here? Yeah, usually it's an injury or condition. Most of the time, right, this involves some kind of pain. Okay. Some kind of, uh, you know, pain that they're having with their activities that they're trying to do. And so we're trying to get rid of that pain, try to get those tissues back to a point where they're able to do things functionally and then we have to actually bring that function back. Okay. And so that can be a process, and I would say most of the time that's about a six to eight week process. But depending on the injury, it can be longer than that, sometimes shorter. And is this the only place that uh, we see patients, the sports medicine clinic here in Delafield? Actually, we do have another clinic, um, that's the Greenfield Clinic, which also has a physical therapy gym right there. Okay. We're also opening the Mequon Clinic okay. here in August, right. and that will be with a physical therapy gym attached as well. And so we'll be positioned to do that in three different locations. Um, there's also, you know, the opportunity to see orthopedists at the main campus, um, but we don't have the sports medicine program there established as much. Awesome, very cool. So obviously you've got all the sports equipment, but then you use um, some of this equipment over here every day too. You see you've got the stretching tables, but also you know the elliptical, the typical bike, and the treadmill. Um, do you use that quite often as well? Absolutely. We really uh, move around the clinic when we're in here, okay. which is nice. Um, another uh, attribute to our clinic, I think, is we've got seating set up for families along the wall. Um, and we've also got, got the wonderful viewing area outside in case there's other siblings or they need to be entertained out there. Um, but that lets the parents see in here all the time because we're moving constantly from start to finish. Um, Another thing we have, again, built in is wonderful uh, functional movement screening tools. So we've got some wonderful equipment um, to really let us, again, assess function uh, the way kids move. So, and the idea is they relearn it in this kind of facility, but then they take it away from them. So families are watching them. They can kind of see their progress or know where they're doing it wrong. So at home, when they go to sit in the chair and they notice that they're not sitting right, the mom and dad can diagnose it or say, you know, that's not the correct way to do it or remember how you learned it at your last appointment or whatever? Absolutely. We work really closely with families and coaches too. Um, so we want, we all want the best for our athletes. So um, we spend a great deal of time with education with patients as well as their parents. And um, when the need arises, if, if parents want us to be working with coaches too, they just sign releases and we're allowed to talk to coaches. And that plan of action that you create sends them home probably with certain things that they, certain stretches or whatever they need Absolutely. to do in order to fully recover from. Absolutely. So we want long-term carryover of things. So in the short term, we want to manage their pain or, or their dysfunctional movement, um, but we want a long-term fix, which usually means a component of flexibility, strength, and, and body awareness and control. So we work really hard to educate them on that. Mm -hmm. Great. So I noticed uh, when we were talking earlier about the facility, you guys had a pool. You said you guys had a pool? Yeah. Can we check that out? Absolutely. Now, what kind of patient uh, typically uses the pool? So um, we have a variety of patients appropriate for the pool. Occasionally, um, if they are restricted on how well they're walking, it's a great way of reducing body weight to let them get used to putting weight through their extremities again. We also see swimmers in our population. So to be able to, again, 
do an assessment on what they're doing in the water that's making them break down and have shoulder pain to do daily activities, we want to see that because they're going to want to go back to swimming at some point and we want to know that um, we're giving them some tools and some feedback to kind of correct the mechanism of their injury. So is there some sort of current that kind of goes in the pool that they fight against or how does there, how do you swim a lap in a pool? Absolutely. So we've got all kinds of fun equipment in here. Um, you can see the various colored um, boxes so we can have athletes working on jumping, sprinting, single leg hopping, etc. Um, the pool has different depths. So for our shorter young athletes to our taller ones, we've got appropriate depth for them. And yes, there is a current that we can turn on, um, which can focus, uh, function as also like resistance, um, okay. for resistance strengthening, and also enough, uh, we can turn it up high enough to actually let kiddos swim. Okay. And right. the water is warmer, right? That's warmer right here. Is there a reason for that? Um, the therapeutic properties of okay. physical therapy. So uh, we tend to want to have uh, relaxation. Okay. And just um, again, comfort instead of jumping into a freezing cold pool. It's not the ice bath Absolutely. that you do after. Okay. <laughs> so we want to promote relaxation for those that are having difficulty with actually moving normally on their extremities. Great. Well, thank you very much for showing us this space. Any final thoughts that you guys have for me today, or anything else that we should know? Well, I just think that here at Children's, you know, in our Delphio Clinic here and our sports medicine program as a whole, our focus is the pediatric athlete. Our focus is, you know, those young athletes up till about age 18. And they're not adults. They are still growing many times even into college. And so I think that really allows us, um, based on the fact that we see those athletes every day, you know, every day, Monday through Friday, that is something that we do. We don't see adults and we're focused on that and we understand that. I think that's really key. Um, and I think the other piece is communication between us as well. You know, I'm just across the hall. I think that's how we're positioned at all of our clinics. And so that really allows us to understand if someone's not making the progress they should have. You know, do we need something additional? Do we need imaging? Do we need to do something else? So I think that communication piece is probably another huge differentiator, something for us that makes it different and better. And you can really just step down here and watch the channel. Oh, absolutely, as I do. And, you know, I come in and I just say, hey, you know, Aaron, how's he doing? You know, is, is he making the progress that we need to see? And she'll say, yes, he is, or no, he isn't. This is why I think so. And that's just great to have that back and forth communication. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, um, thank you everyone, for turning, tuning in. We hope you had a great time watching us. And uh, tune in next time for our next live broadcast.